Hello, bonjour, oi, ni hao, konnichiwa. There are around 6,500 languages in the world, and only about 20% of the people in the world even speak English. So it's definitely worthwhile being able to target some of those other languages. Today, in just about 10 minutes, we're going to cover localization in iOS, some of the tips and tricks you can keep in mind of how to have your app available in different languages across the world. And even if you're not thinking about doing this in your company or your app right now, things you can do that will make it much, much easier for future you. Let me tell you a little bit about myself just to get going. So I'm Ben, and I work at a company called Coffee Meets Bagel. Do we have any Coffee Meets Bagel fans in the audience? Like one? OK, cool. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, great. So yeah, Coffee Meets Bagel, we're a dating app. We help people to build authentic, meaningful, juicy relationships. And we're available on iOS and Android. And during my time on the iOS team, I helped us to localize into 14 different languages. Now, let's go a little bit abstract, and let's discuss some of the fundamentals of translation. Uh, it will help bring a premise for some of the points I'm going to come up uh, against next. So this is kind of how we would like translation to be. You have a, an English sentence with four English words, and you'd really like it to be that four English words translate to uh, like four French words. English one goes to English, uh, French one, English two goes to French two, nice and easy. As anyone who speaks any other language would know, that isn't really how it ever works. It's a little bit more complicated. It's a bit more like this. Like your first word doesn't exist in French, because they don't have it. Your uh, second two words swap places in French, because different ordering. Uh, your final word goes to the end, another word comes in, grammar isn't the same, so you have a colon. The whole thing jumbles around. Now, let's give an example app, as, and I'm going to make a point here with this. We, our example app we're going to look at here is a, a cute app around giving localized captions to cute dog images. Uh, it saves your investment money, but it's, it's going to be big. And in this example app, the caption we have here is, this puppy is from, and then we add a location. We put that location string and add it onto the end. Now, when we want to localize, this is going to be problematic. And this comes to the first point that I want to make, which is, if you want to localize, you cannot concatenate strings. There are plenty of times where you have different phrases, and it seems like a great optimization to push things together. If you concatenate like that, you're going to be in some big trouble down the line. Because your translator won't be able to jumble around all the phrases to make it work. So how can you fix this? Well, it's pretty easy. Uh, we're going to cover both the things you do here to take strings made in code and make it translatable. The first thing you do is you are going to use NS localized string. This is the built-in function to help you make your programmatic text localized. You have a key, which is like here puppy.caption. That's so that your translator string files can actually reference the same place in your code. You have a value, so this puppy is from, and then a variable. So that is the default value, which if you're working with your base language as English, is also your English string. And then you have a comment. The comment is really key. A lot of people will want to leave it blank. But the comment gives your translator context as to what the uh, text is about. And especially if you have a random variable in there, it's really key to tell them what that variable is going to be, or you will get questions as, we can't translate this, we don't know what it is. And by doing it this way with a variable, we are no longer concatenating. The translator can move it around, and they can make that work in any language. The next tip is around images. Now, does anyone here know how to localize images in Xcode? A few people. Trick question, you don't. And what I mean by that is not that you can't. I really mean that you just kind of shouldn't. You can, and there might be times where you really, really need to. But if you can avoid having text in images, if you can discuss with design and, and avoid that completely, you're going to save yourself a lot of headache later on. You're going to save yourself with the designer having to translate and add all of those new assets. You're going to save yourself having to import them. You're going to keep your app size smaller. It's just going to be a lot more convenient. Sometimes you have to but you often can design around it if you have that in mind. The next thing is around other languages not being as compact as English. On average, 
uh, European languages come out at about 30% longer than English. And from experience, I can tell you that Russian, for example, can sometimes come out way longer than that. They're just not as compact. What can you do about this to make it a bit easier to discover these issues? The first thing you can do is Xcode has a really handy build tool called double length pseudo language. It looks a little bit like this. All it does is it takes all of your text fields and labels and it doubles the strings. So now you know from using your app, can it support twice as long text? Probably, if it can support twice as long and nothing's cut off, you can support most other languages. If that doesn't work, as in if you do this and you realize things are cut off, well, what can you do about that? Well, the first thing in terms of designing with localization in mind is you want to be setting this in a lot more places than you might think. And what I mean by this is you want to be designing with the idea that things are going to need to flow to multiple lines and you want to make your layouts responsive to that so that you're not in a situation where everything's being cut off. And if you can have this in mind when you're working with the designer and creating your layouts, and a lot of you will already be doing this for auto layer and different screen sizes, but having this in mind is gonna make things a lot easier. Now, if you can't do that, if it needs to be on one line, or you're in a situation where you just can't make the view work, there is another easy thing to do, and it looks like this. What this says is, in, some situ in this situation, allow my font size to shrink down to 70% to try and let the text fit. Clearly, having really, really tiny font is almost as worse as having things cut off. So you don't wanna go too small, but in the right situations, this can make it a lot easier to have your app work in other languages. Formatting can be an issue. There are definitely lots of things that have a data representation and have visual representations that differ in different languages, different regions. So a real common one is dates. In the US, today's date is uh, the, the 5th of June. It goes month, day, and then year. Uh, however, in other regions, for example, in uh, my homeland of England, we have day, month, and year. So the, the English way is different to the American way. Uh, the English way also is commonly referred to as the correct way. But uh, as <laughs> the point is here is that these are different in different places and it varies all over the world as well. How can you easily have these formats work? Luckily, iOS already has a function and a, a class to make this really easy. All you have to do is make sure you're using the date formatter class. It has a localized string parameter, and this will just, like magic, work pretty much everywhere. Even for numbers and currencies, there's a number formatter, works in the same way, will make your life far, far easier. It's a nice little magic function that's gonna help you in a lot of places. And the final thing I wanna talk about is context. Context is really important, because in English, for example, we might have a word, that has multiple different meanings. And in other languages, they might have a different word for those different meanings. Here's an example that we went through when localizing the Coffee Meets Bagel app. And it comes around uh, this connect button. So the connect button, this is the main screen of the app, allows you to connect with someone who liked you, to start the chat, so you can build a relationship. And the final correct translation we create, we had, was uh, unshi. I spent a long period of time working with a, two native speakers to try and say that correctly. That's as good as we got. But connect, that is the correct translation. That's what we wanted. However, what we originally got from the translators was a translation of the word connect, but it was a lianger, which I was told later on is like connecting to your modem or you know, connecting to Wi-Fi or like screwing things together which clearly is not the kind of connect we want. We don't want the front button of the app to say, like, screw. It, it just would be a bad impression. And this is why it's important to have someone who speaks the language look over the translations, even when you're getting them done by professionals. So there's been a few tips on how you can design with localization in mind, some easy things to take away and to put into practice. If any of you have any more questions, please feel free to get in touch with me then at coffeemeetsbagel.com for talking about iOS, for localization, for dating tips, uh, any, anything you want to talk about. And the last thing I want to leave you with is, surprise, surprise, we are hiring. 
And Coffee Meets Bagel is an amazing company. We're based in San Francisco. We have an office in Seattle. We have people work remote. Feel free to check our jobs page. Feel free to come talk to me. We also have our head of talent, Kim, at the back there. And we have Aldrin here from the iOS team. Feel free to come chat to us. We'd love to have you potentially come work with us. So thank you, all of you, for listening. It's been great. And enjoy the rest of the conference.